War is hell, soldiers spend long hours of fatigue, enduring cold and hunger, all while fighting against the enemy. The limit of human resistance has been a factor that determined victories and defeats throughout history. But in a period of World War II, the Third Reich found a temporary solution to those physical limitations. Innovative tactics? New weapons? No, a drug derived from methamphetamine and cocaine that transformed soldiers into true berserkers capable of spending whole days without rest, making possible the infamous Blitzkrieg, and even, they say, sending many submarines to London. In this new military history video we are going to tell you all about the drugs that the Nazis used on their soldiers. But before continuing, and if you are a fan of firearms, we want to invite you to our new channel, World of Guns, dedicated to analyzing and exploring the most powerful, modern and unusual weapons in the world, as well as their combat history, their development and much more. You can find the link to the channel in the description and in the first comment, don't miss it and give us your support by subscribing to World of Guns. And now, let's go on with today's video. On September 1, 1939, German troops invaded Poland, truly beginning World War II. The Nazi advance was overwhelming, they conquered the country in barely a month. It was the first great demonstration of the strategy called Blitzkrieg or Lightning War. But for that technique to be possible, the tank crews did not sleep for days to keep the tanks moving almost constantly. The Germans knew that they had to keep their men awake, and the invention of energy drinks was still several years away, so the leaders of the Third Reich distributed more than 35 million pills of a drug derived from methamphetamine among the troops, the Pervitin. In 1939, the German doctor Otto Renke spoke of the benefits of Pervitin as if it were a divine elixir. In most people, the substance increases self-confidence, concentration and willingness to take risks. The importance of narcotics during World War II cannot be ignored, even Adolf Hitler himself was addicted to numerous substances, some claim that he consumed up to 74 different types of drugs during the war, most of them prescribed by his personal doctor, Theo Morrill. In 2016, the massive use of Pervitin among men aboard powerful panzers was definitively demonstrated. According to the investigations, the soldiers were not fully aware of what they were consuming, they only knew that they were official orders and that the pills helped them stay awake and with great energy to carry out one of the most violent invasions in history. It would be inaccurate to say that the Nazis discovered Pervitin, it was a product freely consumed by a large part of the population, but they were the first to see its potential on the battlefield. The military doctor Otto Renke, director of defense physiology at the military academy, was the main supporter of the use of this drug. In his words, relaxing for a day can decide the battle, resisting that extra quarter of an hour can be decisive. Interested in the effects of the stimulant, the military man organized two trials in which he tested its results, with different conclusions. On the one hand, he established that those who took the substance could spend a lot of time awake and with a lot of energy. In contrast, Pervitin did not support complex activities that require fine motor skills. Despite the failures found, Ranka became the greatest defender of the drug and promoted its delivery to the hundreds of thousands of German soldiers who participated in the invasion of Poland. The effects were immediate. In a letter sent from the German 3rd Armored Division in September 1939, the effects of Pervitin on tankers are detailed, euphoria, increased attention, improved performance. Work carried out without problems, with a manifest stimulating effect and sensation of freshness. A whole day of service without rest, and no depression or return to normal state of mind. The same official source describes how the soldiers were fresh and alert with great discipline and a bit of euphoria going into combat. As if this were not enough, the Pervitin also severely reduced the appetite of the soldiers and gave them a great work drive. In that letter, an officer describes how he was able to stay up three nights in a row fighting the Poles, all thanks to Pervitin. It was only at the end of 1941 that the addictive effects of this methamphetamine derivative became apparent. Germany ran a serious risk of becoming a country of addicts dependent on a drug that could not be administered in perpetuity, 
which is why the Third Reich made the decision to regulate and drastically reduce the delivery of these pills. But while this stimulant drug was enough for the first big fights of World War II, as the conflict progressed, Germany had to demand even more from its soldiers. In March 1944, Third Reich Vice Admiral Helmuth High requested the creation of a new drug that could give soldiers near superhuman strength and stamina. The pharmacist Gerhard Orzakowski and his research group developed a substance that they could dose in tablets and which they named D9. Each tablet contained 5 mg of oxycodone, 5 mg of cocaine and 3 mg of pervitin, the methamphetamine derivative developed by the Nazis themselves in 1939. Before giving the formula to soldiers, they conducted tests on prisoners at the Sachsenhausen camp. The prisoners were able to march up to 90 kilometers a day without rest, carrying 20 kilograms in their backpacks. D9 actually worked, but the war was all but over by the time the substance was ready for consumption. While the D9 was unable to bring victory to Hitler, there was an alleged secret plan involving gum laced with cocaine, methamphetamine, and other highly addictive stimulants. Towards the end of the war, Germany pursued desperate strategies, including sending small submarine U-boats to England, with the aim of entering the River Thames and delivering one last big blow to one of its main enemies in Europe. It is estimated that 30 of these small submarines were manufactured, and that they were operated by soldiers of small stature and even 16-year-olds. The problem is that the trip in these small submersibles could last up to four days, in which the only crew member of the ship could not sleep or rest. How to get a soldier to have so much resistance and energy? The answer, as throughout World War II, lay in chemical stimulants. This is how they were given a dose of candy or gum with the same formula as the IDX pills, a cocktail of the most powerful stimulant drugs. The result was disastrous, many of the soldiers began to hallucinate long before reaching their objective, others had fatal accidents caused by the overstimulation generated by such a mixture of drugs. The truth is that none of these ships reached London, the attack by the narcotic submarines was a complete failure, one of the last of the already crumbling Third Reich. Why was the Third Reich so prone to drug use? If we look at the history of both lower-ranking soldiers and senior officers, there are many accounts of heavy use of highly addictive drugs. The fact is that, even before the creation of the Nazi Party, Germany was one of the countries with the greatest advances in pharmaceutical matters, the country's chemical industry was enormous and had the technology and capacity to supply the entire German army with drugs. There are illuminating data in this regard, the already powerful German pharmaceutical complex manufactured 40% of the world's production of morphine and led 80% of the international cocaine market. Under such circumstances, it is logical that powerful drugs such as pervitin, IDX and cocaine gum have been commonplace among the troops of the Third Reich. This is how we come to the end of this video, if you want to continue knowing mysterious details of all time, we invite you to subscribe and activate notifications. We are waiting for you in the next episode of Military History.